Hi guys, my name is Melissa Madwick and I'm on the online prosperity show today talking with Prosper. I'm a brand strategist and I'm going to be talking to you today about your branding and how you're being perceived online. Did you know that 94% of people when they're making a purchasing decision base it on your visual representation? So it is extremely important. I'm going to teach you all my tips and tricks and strategies on how to make you look world-class online and generate more business in your own business. I'll speak to you soon. Yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you the brand strategist herself, Melissa. Melissa, how are you doing, my love? I'm good. I'm good for a Friday. How are you doing? Fantastic. It's, it's been a good week. Uh, yeah, can't wait for the weekend, actually. Um, yeah. Obviously, for those that are watching the show right now, you would understand that building your own personal brand, your business brand, or your product brands are of tremendous value if you really want to be um, in, a, in a world where your audience knows, likes, and trusts who you are. And we all know that people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. So I brought you uh, today, Melissa who um, is the head of Brand Dominance, and they offer an end-to-end -end branding and visual identity solution. So they start off with the initial branding conversation through to the launch of your whole visual identity, including your logo concepts, your graphic design, your websites, and more of that stuff. We do know that all of this is important for us to be actually seen in the best light, um, you know, in the marketplace right there. Now, Melissa, tell us a little bit about how you got started and um, what got you to start um, brand dominance? Cool. So it's an interesting story. I, um, I've been in branding and marketing for about 10 years. Um, I'm in the corporate world. And how I started, I started out as what they call a visual communicator. I was commissioned by really large market research firms. And that was in the corporate world. And I would actually see brand coming to life. Like these big companies like Nestle, Telstra, Sydney Airport, uh, Maggi Noodles would all go to these market research firms when they were creating a new product or they were, um, you know, getting a new service or anything like that. They would go get the market research done first, get the feedback and then launch it in the market. So I was a visual communicator. So once all the research was done, all the research, Search would come to me so I used to read everything I used to read all the feedback from people that they would write for instance like when Telstra was changing their logo many many years ago to have them all different colors instead of just the blue and gold that they had um, I read all the, the feedback on and what people thought what their perceptions were and then I would have to create this feedback and put it in a beautifully designed really succinct document that would be presented to the board of directors of the company so I I saw the power of feedback, especially when you're building a new brand. Um, also, the perception, perception is reality, I always say, that all this information had to be then put in a beautiful document for then people to understand, so communication. So I learned all that at a very, very young age. I think I was maybe 24 um, when I was back then. Um, and I just saw the power of branding and good design and feedback. So it's all that meshed in one. So then fast forward many years later, I had this urge to start my own business. I, as we all do, we're all <laughs> entrepreneurs. Um, even when I was working in that agency, I was building stuff on the side. But I knew all this knowledge and I broke down with a, a health issue that I was talking to you about before um, called polycystic ovarian syndrome. And I was very, very sick. And um, I couldn't work anymore. So I started... I was a contractor and I, I've told you these stories before. I was commissioned some weeks uh, as a PowerPoint specialist, visual communicator, sometimes $3,000 a week to make, that, make these documents look pretty for these big organizations. And I remember I got this one contract, it was $3,000. And I was on the train going in there from um, where I lived into Sydney, where it was. And I got off the train and I went in the toilet and I looked in the mirror and I had acne everywhere because I started getting really sick from polycystic ovarian syndrome. And I looked in the mirror and I thought, I can't face people because it was just so embarrassing. And I learned a lot about health that year. So I thought, why is my body breaking down? So anyway, I got back on the train, I started crying and I just said, I can't do this. 
So I went home and I thought, I've got to start a business now. I can't work, even though I've got contracts there waiting for me, I'm going to do my own thing. So I took whatever money I had at the time, but I took all my knowledge. I had many, many years of experience in branding, design and everything then, and I made myself the most amazing website. My first business was called Digital Graphic Design, and I invested heavily into SEO as well. You always have to think of SEO. So my first business name was based on SEO. Um, this was in 2008 I registered that business name, and I knew everything was going online, going digital. So that's why I created that website and that name. And then I started heavily going on the sales and sales and sales and SEO, and within six months I was turning over six figures. And little did my clients know, I was actually working from a dining room table, I had acne everywhere, but because my website looks like a world-class website, and they look like a big agency, people thought I was a big agency in Sydney. So perception was reality, and that's why I started landing these big clients myself that I was working with in these other companies in the corporate world. So, yeah, that's how I got started. Absolutely. Such a remarkable story, especially the part where you really stood up within yourself and said, you know, this is it. I'm going to have to do something about um, my yeah. situation here. You know, some people would just let that cripple them and they won't um, even get back up there. Now, you did yeah. mention a really important um, aspect that a lot of us are working from our dining room tables. Um, you know, some of us may have an extension within the house that we have made into our permanent work and your, you know, the way your output of work can be, you know, jeopardized by the way you feel about your working environment and you, you, the way you then present yourself online, um, you know, makes it counters for that. Can you just walk us through the real importance of having a strong, um, you know, um, either, you know, social footprint or, yeah. you know, web online presence, um, especially when you're running a small business and you probably have like the same problems that you were running uh, behind the scenes. How important is it to have like a really strong uh, brand that is visual online? Yep. Yeah. Good question. I think the biggest thing is, is looking at trends in general for businesses. Like I even have a mentor and made millions and millions of dollars owning agencies, like big agencies that I was pretending to look like. Um, and a lot of those agencies are changing because as in any industry, big clients and sort of clients are wanting services on demand now. They want things fast. They want things now. Um, and I think that's why a lot of businesses, um, you know, that are watching this channel as well have a lot of opportunity at the moment because they're fast, they're nimble, and that's what these even big agencies want. I even contracted um, Tolbert last week. Again, they, they have a big company. Why doesn't Toll Group have an internal graphic design team? But they don't, they don't need it. And sometimes it's, it's easier to outsource to people like us that can do it quicker. So it is important to be online. You've got to have a really good, strong presence. You've got to look good online um, because people search for you. And guys, please remember that SEO is still popular. Like these, you've got to go where the big fish are. If you are the CEO of Toll Group Australia or any sort of big, big business like that, you've got to think of their mentality. Would they be going on Facebook groups to search for business? Or will they be going on SEO search engines and typing in like presentation design of Perth or Sydney to look for a service? So you've got to really think like them. Stop thinking like what you are. I know that you and I, like we're younger, we're more nimble. We probably go on Facebook, write to people and go, hey, I need this person or whatever. But you've got to think that I call them dinosaur businesses. They're not where we are. Some of them are old school business and they, they even think the internet's old, like too new for them. But they're looking on Google. So you've got to be there. But I've got some stats here that might help. 93% um, of people's purchasing judgments are based on visual representation. So think about it. When you go to a shop and if you're buying a can of soup or a new cereal, or uh, iced coffee, what draws your attention to different brands? You've got to really think about it because in the packaging, and you know a lot of businesses are doing this, even Coles and things, I shouldn't really say, but they all use the same sort of manufacturers. They're just labeled differently. They've probably all got the same stuff in it, like a can of soup, but you're buying because you're looking at the packaging going, wow, that's a new font, 
wow, they're beautiful colours put together. Wow, they look different and new. Um, and you'll buy that based on that. So 90% of your your purchasing decisions right now are based on visual, visual representation. Um, also, 84% um, people say that colour is the main reason why people buy a product. So colour is so important. So even on your website, I'll just say something, example. If you've got an online e-commerce shop or something for people to buy, please, please, please do not use red as your button to buy because sometimes, <laughs> if that's you, it's okay. You've got time to change it because sometimes in the Western countries, red is danger. Red is no stop. Like if you think about it, we look at when we drive our car, um, you know, the traffic lights are red. Red means stop. So what I always suggest is to pick a different colour. You don't have to have green if it clashes with your branding, but have a different colour on there that draws eyes to it and that they're going to make a purchasing decision because that button stands out. But don't use the colour red. Do not use red. Um, and even colours. 80% of people recognise colours associated with the brand. So colour psychology is so, so important. So that's how you can do it. You can start looking at it and saying, am I consistent with all my colours? Am I consistent with my visuals? Because people are judging you. Even right now, Prosper, people are judging us the way we look right now. They're judging you. You look so awesome in your like tie and everything like that. They're judging me. They're like, what's Mel wearing? What's in her background? What's everything? So that is the perception that people are judging already based on what we're wearing, how we're speaking, uh, what's in our background. They've these opinions already of us. Absolutely. I like that you brought in <clears throat> the importance of color. Um, you know, when, when, when people are looking into the design of their logo or website, because half of the time, maybe yellow is my favorite color, but yellow is not the right color palette for the type of product that we're putting out there. It's like trying to sell gym wear for men and you've got the color pink or the color purple. Um, can you just maybe touch up on, on some of that or any sort of life examples you might have, um, you know, so that it really drives home that just because pink is your favorite color, it shouldn't mean yes. that that's, that is what should be on your brochures or on your, on your marketing out there. Yeah. So that's a very good question. I think a lot of business owners have their favorite color. Like I love purple. So my whole business is going to be purple. But if you're attracting males and stuff like that too, it might not work. Now, my business, my business is pink. The only reason why I've done that, because I've always said I want people to stand out. And like everyone sort of in my industry use the normal blues and all that sort of color. So I wanted to say my, my thing is I want you to stand out. And it's funny, a lot of my business businesses that I attract are males. But my branding is pink. So I think the reason why is because they know the underlining message that I'm trying to help you stand out. But yes, if you're wearing, if you're producing active wear or things like that and you have pink targeting males, it's not going to work. Um, I was even telling you this story as well that um, we had a client that was, we're doing whey proteins and they're, they're targeting targeting uh, Singapore, they're also Australian and Sri Lanka and all different countries. So a lot of Asian, like Asian market. But they showed me their, their current logos and current packaging and it's blue. And I've shown them all their competitors and their competitors have really strong mas masculine colours like red and blacks and oranges and things. When you think of a whey protein, like you don't think of a, a blue colour and it looks, I don't know, it, it just was not strong enough. Like blue colouring, like we've talked about, would be great for like water, you're designing a, like a new water product or anything like that. But for a whey protein, it does not evoke an emotion that I want to have this and it's masculine. It just was a terrible blue and everything. And I looked at that straight away and I told them that, but they had no idea. So that's why sometimes you need the help of a branding specialist because people don't think of this stuff. And they'll go out there, they'll create a brand and they have all these crazy colours and they can market and they're like, what's that? <laughs> that looks terrible. Okay, you need to understand the psychology of colours, but also even symbols. And like if you're, if you're targeting males and you have a lot of straight lines in your logo and symbols and stuff, that can represent like strength and professionalism and things triangles in the logo has the sort of uh, emotion of power 
religion, science, law. So even if you're a law firm, having a, like a triangle in the logo can evoke those sort of emotions. So you've got to understand all of it. Everything you create is creating an emotion in your market and it needs to be the right one that they want to think about and sort of taste and smell and go, yes, I want to work with you because of how you look online. Absolutely. So we've <clears throat> really dwelt around, you know, your perception of how people actually look at who you are and then base that decision, um, you know, of maybe doing business with you based on, um, you know, that initial introduction they have because um, first impressions count the most. And so your colors, your symbols should also be in line with uh, whatever you're putting out there. Now, just looking at the way the market has changed and you have mentioned this um, in passing uh, at the beginning there, uh, Melissa, where you say that um, us small to medium businesses, we're small, we're agile, we're nimble. And, um, um, you know, all the other bigger businesses are just looking for like people in the gig economy, which is what we, most of us are doing anyway, uh, just fulfilling a service and then going on to the next sort of company. Is there a need then now to actually brand your business name or to brand yourself as a car, as, as, as a personal brand? Like, would you just touch on that as somebody who really deals with things like that, um, you know, in their day to day life, like your business brand, personal brand or product brand? Like, yeah, that's a great question. So I feel like business is changing. Um, because we do communicate with a lot of people online now, we're using online methods like people to people. Yeah. So, you know, meetings and all that stuff, you know, it is dying off. People are just like, even, I'll just tell you a quick example, even from my first business, I landed a $40,000 contract just by someone going on my website. I didn't even pick up the phone. Yeah. Because my website, I told everyone what, it, what, what I did, it had all my profile, it had my credibility on there. They just wrote to me and said, how much for all this? I said to them, this price, no phone call. They said, fine, that's fine. I was like, whoa, this is when I was first starting. So I guess the thing is you've got to know your end goal. Um, some people don't want to be seen online. Um, they just want to, and I've actually written a blog post for this, uh, and I'll, I'll give you the link to read so your people can read this as well. Thank I you. I feel like you've got to know your end goal. If you don't want to be seen, I don't think you're going to be as popular if you do. You've got to look at all the big brands out there. Like, look at Apple. Why is Apple so big? Because people know Steve Jobs. Why is Microsoft big too? People know about Bill Gates. Um, I think it's just relating that personal story. And then, like, even these people have created, told their story. Like, we connect to Apple so much now because we learnt more about Steve, how he started. He started in a garage. And we're like, wow, you went from that to that. People like that story. And even with my own business, I hid behind my first business because I had acne and everything everywhere. But then I rebranded myself as brand dominance and I put myself out there more. You can see on my website, I've got my video and everything. And my business has exploded because I created a video about me, my story and where I've come from. And people are wanting to connect with me. So my business model is businesses connecting with me. If you don't want that, that's fine. Um, but I still say to a lot of businesses out there, have a picture of you. Have a story about your background and why you started. Maybe even a quick video of how you started and things. Because people will, if they have like 20 accounting firms that they're trying to choose between, and then they land on yours and they hear a personal story about you and how you started and your staff and there's a picture of you and you don't just have a website with nothing on it, I guarantee you that people are going to want to connect with you over the others. Because the basic human need, and even Tony Robbins talks about this, is connection. We all want connection with each other. We're not robots. We want connection. <laughs> so connect. Get out there. So, and like, even for me, I was so petrified getting out there. I hated doing video and all this stuff. But I thought, and even Steve Jobs said, if you read about, he knew if, if he was going to take Apple to the next level, he had to get over his fear of public speaking and get out there. And he did. And once he did, Rocket, you know, Apple saw. So I say that to any business owner. If you're hiding, like I used to hide, stop it. You've got a service. You are here serving a purpose in this world. Um, get out there. 
and show what you are about. And I know we sort of talked about this way as well, the tall poppy syndrome. Um, I don't, I believe in Australia it does exist, exist, but I just think celebrate your successes. The people that think that you're like a show off and everything like that, they're not meant to be in your life because if you don't get out there and tell your story, you could be inspiring so many other people. Um, yes, you're going to get sometimes negative comments, but who cares? Um, I always say follow like follow the Americans. The Americans are so great at self promotion. So fantastic, and some of the biggest businesses come out of America. So follow them. Australians need to be more like Americans sometimes in business, and just just go out there and tell the world what you do. There's no no issue in doing that at all. Absolutely, I, I love that because I, I can't quite remember. I was I was trying to think of the quote while you were talking. Um, that those that mind don't matter, but those that matter don't mind. And um, if you're going to, nobody's going to come and knock on your house's door and be like, hey, Melissa, hey, Prosper, it's time for you to shine. You know what I mean? You got to put yourself yeah. out there. Now, yeah. you also spoke a little bit about connection, right? And how, um, you know, we as humans, we are creatures that, you know, are, are designed for homeostasis and how that's how we survive. Now, how can people get connected to you so that they can learn <laughs> how they can also brand themselves and put themselves out there? Cool. So you can go on my website. That's probably the best way, www.branddominance.com.au. Um, you can contact us on the contact form, but there's also a little uh, messenger app on there that goes straight to Facebook. If you want to send me an instant message, you can on there as well. And I'll hear about your story and what you're struggling with because I think the biggest issue with people, they don't understand branding. I think it's the least understood part of what makes a business work. I think a lot of businesses out there just go choose a font. They start an Instagram page, Facebook page, and they're like, oh, I'm going to be a millionaire. Um, but it's just you've got to start, have the good foundations, and you've got to go out there, start your marketing, and smash the sales, and, um, and then your business will succeed. Absolutely. And um, also, uh, your video is going to be in conjunction with your profile on the Australian Business uh, Online Directory, so people can also get a hold of you through yeah, that channel right. there. Now, Melissa, it's, it's well, we, we still would want to think it's the first quarter, or man, first quarter of the year, and um, some people have maybe just started, or they're going into year two, year three, year four, year five. Uh, but every single year, people are starting all over again. You know why? The competition is getting bigger and bigger and things are changing. You know, Facebook is what people thought they were branding themselves in, but now it just changed the algorithm. What sort of, you know, last minute um, words would you give to somebody who's really struggling to put themselves out there and, um, you know, showcase their work, especially uh, through, you know, branding strategies that you help your customers with? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing is cash flow when you first start a business. You always need, you've got to really cash flow. At least 80% of the time, you've got to be on sales. And I don't mean doing and knocking like old salesman techniques, but you need to be reaching out to people. Like LinkedIn is a great way even. But the thing that people will do, they will still stalk you on your website. They will still stalk you on social media and everything and see whether you are legit. Um, and then, like I said, 93% of purchasing judgments will be based on your visual representation. So if you look terrible online, you know, people will go, like if you get a really cheap website done, it looks horrible. And you can get them done cheaply. People will look at that and go, oh, they've just slapped that together. They don't care about quality um, or whatever perceptions they're going to have. So you need to look world-class before people find you. I think that's the biggest step. You've got to understand who you are, have all that sort of set up. And then you can start on your marketing. But you don't have to have lavish amounts of money up front, but you need to look at that. Um, and I feel a lot of people just copy each other in terms of their branding. People copy. Um, and you've got to stop doing that. You've got to be, stop looking, stop having those blinkers on and like looking side to side. Focus on what you want to do. If you want to do something that's completely different, go out there and fail fast. Go to the market things. When you get a new logo done, for example, go ask your market what they think um, and then get that feedback. But you've got to be okay with it too and see what they've um, said and then merge it together um, because feedback is always great. But know that some people always have an opinion. You're always going to get people that don't think like you, but you need to get feedback. So get your visuals done, 
get your, your website or whatever it is online and then go out and invest in SEO, invest in connecting with people on LinkedIn, go to networking groups and all that and start your business um, that way. Um, and then just see what you can do because you always got to focus on your USP. People don't even know what their unique selling point is in their business. Um, they're just copying their competitors. And if you're looking all the time at your competitors, you're going to look the same. You're going to be offering the same. You need to write down a list of what I do best, um, what I can offer my clients better than anyone else, but make sure you look world-class and then go out there and, and talk to them. Get out of your comfort zone and start talking talking to people because that's oh. how you can <laughs> absolutely well thank you thank you so much and if you're really considering um you know to figure out how you can you know move out there and um sh showcase your business you can tell melissa and crew are really extremely passionate about educating companies like yourself whether you're large or you're small and they're really experienced in the design and the marketing, given them, you know, tremendous experience that she's had with larger brands and the research that she has, you know, be sure to reach out because, um, you know, at the end of the day, if you are not seen, nobody would know who you are. Nobody would care to, in, yep. you know, interact with you and um, you would just become a one click wonder. People wouldn't know who you are exactly. So thank you so much, Melissa, for your time, your expertise and your knowledge on the show today. Um, and uh, hopefully people are actually going to be visible now that they know you exist. That's all good. Thank you so much. And, you know, this is a new year, guys. Get out there, do something different. And don't be afraid to get your business out there. But just make sure that your personal branding and business branding is spot on. Because people are going to judge you anyway. So make sure it's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. See you.